Matt Allenson is a science communicator who lives in London. His PhD focused on reducing the cost of solar panels by making them out of highly toxic carcinogens that dissolve in rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was one of the winners of Barfest 2016 with a slightly less ridiculous idea that the Kardashian sisters were a reliable source of graphene. <laughs> he has also given talks to the Royal Institution, Einstein's Garden at Greenman Festival and Wikimania 2015. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matt Allenson! <laughs> Shame on you all for laughing at the part of that that wasn't a joke that was the actual description of what my PhD was. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Richard. Uh, actually, just on the, uh, the note of um, you were talking about being, being at school and how you didn't really learn anything and it was just wanton violence, I did a, I did a chemistry PhD uh, at Imperial and it was exactly the same thing. Uh, saying fire to the plastic on Bunsen burners never gets old. Um, so, my name is uh, Matthew Anson and I am talking to you today. I'm not going to look at that way because you can't hear me when I do that. My name is Matthew Anson, and I'm talking to you today about making sense of the unmake sensible by applying scientific principles. Now, uh, give us a cheer if that sounds exciting to you. Now, also, uh, give me a cheer if you don't like Brexit. You're about to witness five minutes of a man shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, because today I am talking about Brexit. Now, Brexit is a funny, exciting thing uh, that is going on in the world. There's a lot of, there's a lot of scary things happening in the world. Uh, last year, uh, about exactly this time last year, I had just submitted my PhD thesis and I won Barfest and I thought to myself, you know what, Matt? 2016 is looking like it's shaping up to be a really, <laughs> a really fun year. Um, and it turned out, uh, like a lot of my PhD thesis, I was thoroughly, thoroughly wrong. Uh, but anyway, Brexit. Uh, Brexit happened on uh, last year. Uh, we managed to uh, get a source of uh, great EU U puns. Um, uh, this, was, this was The Sun from the day. The Sun is a newspaper famous for, pitching pi yeah, for printing pictures of tits. Uh, and here we are, uh, ce celebrating uh, Brexit. And the, the, thing, the thing with Brexit is that there's a, there's a lot of questions about Brexit. What's Brexit going to do? What's Brexit going to be like? And, and, and there's, there's lots of answers to that. Because like, so say, say the day Brexit happened. If, if you're a scientist, you like to turn to graphs for, for solutions to problems. And this was obviously a big graph that came out the day after Brexit. Uh, this is the pound versus some really strong foreign currencies. Uh, this is the Venezuelan Bolivar. Um, <laughs> this is a country where currently, in a weird twist of the French Revolution, making, br uh, making cake is currently illegal. Uh, uh, this is the Zimbabwean dollar uh, versus the This is, uh, I, I, on the day of Brexit, I got a text from my, uh, my Zimbabwean friend who was like, uh, my $1,000 trillion note is finally coming at some value. And uh, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the pound versus the Somali shilling. Uh, there are two things I love about the Somali shilling. The first is the fact it's good that there were no British uh, hostage, uh, pirate hostages at the time of Brexit, because uh, that is the last thing you need in a hostage negotiation. Uh, the fact that the price is going to jump by 30% because of weird currency fluctuations. Um, and my other favorite thing about this is the fact that the pound actually started dropping quite long before the vote. And, I, and in my mind, there is, there is the one foreign exchange trader in Mogadishu dodging like mines and drones, thinking, you know what, I think Nigel Farage has got this. Uh, like, I'm going to short the pound. And, and look at the money he made. Um, but anyway, uh, so graphs can tell you like, about the effects of Brexit, but uh, financial graphs don't really tell you what Brexit means. So, I propose that we're going to do a scientific analysis of what Brexit means, try to get to the bottom of it. Now, this question... Uh, I think you might all know the answer before we get to it. But there's a famous question, what does Brexit mean? And the answer to this question is... First, Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's hear that again. <laughs> First, Brexit means Brexit. That's absolutely right, Theresa. Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> now, you might say that that is a completely uh, pointless phrase that has uh, no, no understanding, like they, 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 it means nothing. It's completely vacuous political waffling. Uh, I wouldn't say that uh, because I'm not fully English and I don't want the right-wing press to come after me. So <laughs> what I propose is Brexitology, which is a scientific study of Brexit, which I'm going to do for you today. 
So first off, oh sorry, and this is me. There, this is me. Uh, I, I'm acutely aware one of the judges this evening is Tom Welton, who was the head of the chemistry department when I was a chemistry uh, PhD student here. Um, this wasn't this this wasn't filmed. This wasn't taken here. So that's me doing some Brexit. We're going to do some Brexit on first. Brexit means Brexit. So. Brexit means Brexit. How are we going to analyse this scientifically? Well, uh, to start off, I'm going to turn to mathematics. So, let's make Brexit a constant. <laughs> we'll call it B. Beta, because firstly, does anyone else see it? Uh, I, I don't know if I have just have like a memory where I assign shapes to other shapes. I've always think that beta looks a bit like England. Um, <laughs> you've, kind of, you've kind of got Cornwall, you've got East Anglia, and you've got like Aberdeen up here. Uh, anyway, beta, Brexit, that's where we are. Um, beta is Brexit. So given Brexit means Brexit, any function f of Brexit also equals Brexit. <laughs> so f of a uh, beta equals beta, f of b beta equals beta, so on, f of z. Uh, yeah. Infinite series of functions of Brexit will equal Brexit. Therefore, um, one more? There we go. Therefore, Brexit is equal to the union of all functions of Brexit. That is a self-similar set. Uh, Self-similar sets. Uh, you might know a lot. Uh, any mathematicians in the crowd might already be sniggering because I can see where I'm going with this. Uh, Self-similar sets. Uh, this is, a, this is a, one of those suspicious European chaps uh, <laughs> called Helg von Koch. Uh, with one of those suspicious, humorously European names. Uh, he gave one of these self-similar sets. If you plot this self-similar set, uh, it is a fractal. Self-similar sets are uh, topo topographically fractal. So as you zoom in on them, it, you can see it's actually the same, sheet re same shape repeated all the way down. Uh, this gets very mesmerizing. I, could, I feel like I'm at a Darren Brown show, and I am, in fact, Darren Brown. I need to all stand up and rob banks and stuff. But anyway, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll stop away from this. Because if we consider that Brexit is a self-sustaining set, <laughs> if you actually look really closely at the word Brexit, you'll notice the dot above the eye is, in fact, <laughs> just the word Brexit. Uh, the dot above that eye is also just the word Brexit. Uh, the Brexit is fractal. Brexit means Brexit. The sum of all states of Brexit is Brexit. Brexit is actually just a fractal quantity. Scientifically, what can we draw from this? We can draw that Brexit is going to spiral on forever and ever. <laughs> Downwards. Forever. So we've, already, so we've applied some mathematics to Brexit. Let's see, let's see what else we can do. So what else do we know about Brexit? Well, we know that. Red, white, and blue Brexit. That's absolutely right. Did we hear that at the back? Let's get that again, Teresa. It's about a red, white, and blue Brexit. One more time. I love that phrase. So, she's doing it on an aircraft carrier. How, how more basically politically can you get? It's about a red, white, and blue Brexit. That's right. It's about a French Brexit, or an American Brexit, <laughs> or a Dutch Brexit. No, no, no. It's about a red, white, and blue Brexit. Now, you might again <laughs> think that this is a completely meaningless, completely vacuous statement. They're like red, white, and blue Brexit because arbitrary imaginary concepts cannot have color. <laughs> Except in the world of quantum chromodynamics, <laughs> where they can, where they can and do. Uh, quantum chromodynamics uh, is, is uh, invented by Murray Gell-Mann, who's a uh, kind of a cool dude from uh, the uh, Los Alamos era, uh, and it describes a quantity of quarks. Uh, if you take everything on planet Earth, for example, Afghan hounds, uh, they are made, or, uh, and other things, are made of molecules. Uh, Afghan hounds and other things are made of molecules. Molecules are made of atoms. Uh, atoms uh, have a nucleus within them. In those nuclei, you have uh, protons and neutrons, and protons and neutrons are made of quarks. Uh, there's something called the Fermi exclusion principle, which states that uh, uh, subatomic particles, or any particles really, which have exactly the same properties can't be too closely together because they drive each other apart. That's why um, if you have magnets, then they repel each other, sort of. Um, but <laughs> just realized like some physicist is going to comment in the comments, like, actually. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I quite like Brexit. No, um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, so to get around that, uh, uh, some Japanese physicists in the 50s uh, came up with this thing called color charge, uh, which is that quarks of the same charge can exist together because they have the same color charge. Uh, that is applying color to arbitrary imaginary events. Uh, there go, uh, Brexit is made of quarks. Now, what type of quarks was it made of? Uh, ooh, I forgot I added that. <laughs> A red, white, and blue Brexit. That is absolutely right. Red, white, and blue are the type of quarks we are after. Um, now, a uh, white combination of quarks uh, exists everywhere in nature. You are, uh, and uh, Afghan hounds, and this table, and this clicker, are all made up of white quark combinations, are baryons. Uh, a white Brexit is very easy. All we need to do is... <laughs> <laughs> However, 
Uh, red and blue quark combinations don't exist for very long in nature at all. Uh, to make those, you actually need to build the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, another suspicious European thing. Um, so we can't obviously use the European one, even though only a little bit of it's in France, the other bits of it in Switzerland. We sort of like Switzerland now because, it, anyway, whatever. Um, so we need to build our own Large Hadron Collider, which will obviously cost us 13 billion pounds. Um, so we can draw another conclusion that Brexit is going to cause, uh, cost an inordinately large amount of money and take up an incredibly huge amount of energy for what is ultimately a pointless and short-lived task. Um, now, uh, what else do we know about Brexit? Uh, Brexit is, uh, could take up to 10 years. Brexit is complex. Uh, uh, um, so what do we know about complex things? <laughs> Uh, complex numbers have the form A plus B, uh, I. Um, a and B are both real numbers. Uh, I is the square root of minus, uh, the square root of minus one. Uh, not squared, I just added that squared sign for no reason. Uh, the, the, f the first and only unscientific thing you'll see in this talk. Uh, anyway, the square root of minus one uh, is called the imaginary number. Uh, so if Brexit is complex, Brexit contains imaginary numbers. <laughs> But also, because it contains a square root of an integer, it also contains irrational figures, <laughs> such as, click, hey! <laughs> so a conclusion we can draw from this is Brexit is full of irrational and imaginary numbers. Uh, now, what else do we know about Brexit? My final one, uh, we focus a lot on the hard sciences. Uh, we focus a lot on like, the physics and the maths. Uh, so let's focus on the social anthropologists. Um, and they'll <laughs> yeah, take that social anthropologist. Um, <laughs> So, the social anthropology of Brexit. Uh, this is a map of all the areas. Uh, red uh, denotes uh, voted for Brexit. And the darkness of the red is how, how, how much they hate foreigners. Uh, sorry, uh, freedom. Uh, and, the, uh, and the dark red on this map is uh, how likely they are to die. Um, uh, the, these are, I haven't made these up. These are real. Um, uh, uh, we can go on. Uh, of the 30 areas with the most elderly people, 27 voted leave. Uh, here is how likely you are by age to vote for Brexit, and here is how likely it is by age that you are to die this year. Um, Brexit was won by one million, no, uh, whatever that number. Um, uh, uh, so there's roughly half a million deaths per year. Uh, let's assume 65% of them were Brexit fans. Uh, that's 325,000 deaths. Uh, let's assume 75% of them actually voted for Brexit. Uh, the national stat was 71%, but it was actually up to 80% in the uh, higher age group, so we sort of average that out 75. Um, so there's about 243,000, deaths of Brexit voters per year. Uh, so let's plot that on the graph. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's where, so, so we, uh, it's going to happen this week. So Brexit, uh, Article 50 is this week. So Brexit is there. Um, so uh, f five years after Brexit happens, um, the majority of people alive in the UK will have voted Remain. Uh, <laughs> didn't get a laugh for that one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but there is one proviso to that. Obviously, uh, we're going to get £350 million a week more for the NHS, aren't we? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And let's, and let's get a source on that. £350 million pounds a week we send to the EU, which we will no longer send to the EU. Can you guarantee that's going to go to the NHS? No, I can't. <laughs> In conclusion, <laughs> Brexit is going to spiral on forever and ever. Brexit is going to use an ordinarily large amount of money and resources. Ultimately, the point of starts. Brexit is irrational and full of irrational numbers. By the time Brexit is done and dusted, the majority of the people alive won't have voted for it. Applying science to Brexit does not teach us anything we didn't know. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Matt Allenson. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>